You worked with Ares to plan it on me. So when the shoes you gave me pulled me down into Tartarus, the bolt would be delivered right to Kronos. I didn't think you'd give him the Grover to wear. It's our way out. Way out of what? Camp. In their control. Backbiter can open secret doors. We can stay on the run as long as it takes. Stop saying we. I am your friend. Percy, none of this was meant to betray you. Hi, welcome to the second video in my series of comparing Percy Jackson characters to roles in dysfunctional families. This one being Luke Castellan is the most golden child to ever golden child in the history of golden children. <laughs> so, what is a golden child? A very bare bones definition is someone who is favored or held in high esteem by others, whether it's part of a family, a team, a coworker, any sort of system where they're being um, where they're being favored in ways that other people are not. Another term I'm going to bring up here is flying monkey. So the term flying monkey comes from the Wizard of Oz actually. You know how in that in the Wizard of Oz the monkeys for that are like the kind of hench people for the the wicked witch will attack Dorothy and stuff and in a way where they don't have to like she like the witch doesn't have to do it because the monkeys do it for them a flying monkey in a dysfunctional environment is somebody who is basically furthering the kind of cause that the golden child is doing so that the golden child doesn't have to actually do it themselves and they're doing all this work behind the scenes sometimes the person like the golden child doesn't even know they're doing it like in this case the golden child luke has no idea that this is happening but it it's happening regardless and because of all of this work that this other person has done they kind of gaslight a lot of the people's victims and they also like work so hard to protect the golden child from the consequences of their of their own actions so who is the flying monkey in this situation hermes hermes is the biggest flying monkey that luke could ever ask for out of purely out of like total guilt of knowing that he completely messed up with being his dad everyone knows that he did that but the wrong thing to do mr hermes man is to definitely go out there and do all this stuff to protect your son from the things that he actually needs to be held responsible for like for example the fact that luke goes to elysium like i just want anyone to imagine like i saw a tiktok video about this i'm gonna flash on the screen in the last couple days that made me want to add this to this video but imagine you are selena and from the time that you were 13 years old Luke came to you, used the fact that he knows that you have a crush on him when he is 19, 20 years old by now and you're 13. So there's already that whole, you know, minors thing going on um, with also with Selena. But then on top of it, he uses the fact that he knows that you like him and then puts all of this responsibility on you by telling you that if you don't act as the mole for him, that more kids that you are friends with, that you love, that are your like second family, your real family at camp are going to get hurt, are going to die if you don't work with him. And so the longer you do that, the more you feel like you have to because you, you're afraid now that you're going to be like cast out of camp if they find out what you've done. And so you keep doing more things, hoping that that will help kids from being hurt, your, your, your family, your found family from being hurt. And the longer it goes on, the worse it gets. Only for, for your boyfriend to be murdered by Luke and for that to finally be the thing to make you realize that all of this time, you hoping that he is actually the good part, like actually is trying to help save kids, even though from the very start, as soon as he, um, as soon as he poisons Thalia's tree, it's pretty obvious that he's not trying to do that, um, that he's trying to, he's just trying to hurt as many kids as possible but you don't want to believe that about someone especially when you're trapped in a situation like that like she is and so she finally tells people about what luke has been making her do all these years and she feels like 
she needs to sacrifice herself because of the guilt of everything she's done and especially after charlie was killed she i don't think she really wanted to you know survived through to the end of the war anymore and and alone without him there and having to deal with what luke forced her to do and so she basically kills herself in the most painful way in the last olympian and then a man you're in elysium after all of that because they realize that you're you're the, the, a huge victim that you were groomed he put you through so much stuff that was not your fault only for him to show up there two hours probably an hour or two after you get there and he gets to be in elysium along with you the person that terrorized you like that the person that killed your boyfriend the person that killed other kids that are in elysium with you he gets to be there because his dad is hermes and his dad for the last five years has been trying to convince people that Luke is just lost, that he's not like a bad person, that he's actually a hero. Look, he sacrificed himself at the end. That means he realized that he was wrong. Did he? Did he realize that he was wrong? Did he realize that? Or did he just realize that he, his, his little bitch ass lost? Is that what really happened? Did he actually realize that his bitch ass lost? He never thought that he was going to lose. And then once he realized at the end of The Last Olympian that you lost, bro, it's like, well, now the only thing I can do is kill myself to try to justify any of this because it's not like he wanted to stay alive and actually have to deal with the fact that he was a terror and destroyed thousands of people's lives and lost I don't think he really realized the error of his ways because a golden child is someone that is used to kind of being able to manipulate people and knowing the things to say to get people to do what they want. You know how when Luke in the show tries to convince Percy to join him, even though Percy is telling him, no, I don't want to join you. What are you talking about? Leaving camp? I love camp. He's just like, he's not acknowledging what Percy's actually saying. It's like he's talking to a brick wall because he just assumes like that if he just talks to Percy, Percy obviously is going to join him like that. You know, those tears that Luke has in that scene in the show, it's absolutely because he is so like shocked and hurt by the fact that Percy and Annabeth figured out what he was doing and they don't want to join him like that's what he's heard about that they don't want to kill everybody (laughs) but that's essentially what golden child golden children expect that to happen and so there is no way that luke expected to ever lose he he went into this whole thing expecting to be better and smarter than everyone and despite the fact that from the very start at least with the tv show version he was outsmarted by two 12 year olds and even within the books he was outsmarted by the them consistently um throughout the rest of the books he still even though he had a mole um he still thought up until the moment when he realized that he had no other choice that he was going to win um i don't think i i honestly don't think that if any other kid was in the role of luke like let's say in an alternative universe where percy joined um chronos like percy would never in any circumstance but let's pretend like that's even possible if the same thing happened where he lost at the end i don't think that percy would have ended up in elysium i don't think that anyone else but luke would have ended up in elysium because of just how he was treated by everybody like percy is told all the time in these books that luke was the best fighter before you luke was really good at sword fighting uh you fight well because you fight like luke or oh luke fought this way but you fought that way and luke was was like this great person and luke did this and luke did that people are constantly comparing him to luke and kind of be reminded throughout a lot of those books that if Luke was still at camp, everyone would choose him over Percy. And that despite all the things that he's doing for these people, until we really get to the end of The Last Olympian, there's still some people question whether Luke is actually as bad as he actually is. 
um, because of people like Hermes running interference for him, because of people just not wanting to believe that somebody like him, who seemed like such a good person, could actually be so bad. And that's that's the thing about golden children is they kind of use what's at their disposal in the world to get away with things. And Luke dying is one of the most manipulative things he does to his victims, particularly Percy and Annabeth, because it really cuts off them actually being able to, like, process what Luke put them through. Because it's it's already hard enough, like, Percy has been told over and over again throughout all these books that Luke can be saved. He gets into multiple fights in Sea of Monsters because Hermes thinks that Luke that Luke can be saved and thinks that it's Percy's responsibility to try to save him, even though he ends up almost killing him multiple times. Um, he's told a lot, like he's he knows from the very beginning pretty much that Luke is gone and there's no point in trying to save him. And everyone else tries to save him and argues with him about it all the time. And he ends up being right in the end. And despite all of that, and even after he's gone, he Luke is labeled as the hero of the prophecy. Percy is the one that handled all of that stress and anxiety and pressure of having to be the one to to actually make a choice and somehow save the world. But somehow, after the war is over, after Kronos is gone, somehow Luke is the one that gets labeled the hero by the prophecy, even though Percy is the one that did absolutely everything you were supposed to be doing. He's the one that saved everybody, but somehow Luke is the one that gets labeled the hero. And so, like, how are you supposed to be angry at the guy who killed himself to get rid of the big bad for you so you didn't have to actually stab him to death? Most golden child, like, scapegoat interaction I can remember right now from, from these books is when Luke is getting ready to kill himself and he tells Percy, don't forget, don't forget about people like me and Ethan Nakamura. Um, Make sure that something changes so this doesn't happen again. And it's like, are you, Luke, are you kidding me? Percy, all of these years, has been thinking about those kids while you have been killing them. He has spent every single day thinking about those kids. For years by this point, he has been thinking about how he's the one in charge of this prophecy. He has to figure out what to do to save these kids. And you, at the very end of your life, suddenly are like, oh, don't forget about them. And it's like, yeah, like you did. You forgot about them years ago. You don't care about them. You abandoned them. You left them in the labyrinth to lose their minds if some if people like Percy and Annabeth didn't rescue them. You don't care about them, and you're suddenly putting that on Percy as if he's ever forgotten. He's the only one who is actually thinking about them in this dynamic. And it's just like one last manipulation he can throw at him before he goes. Because really, how much more upsetting can it get than to think about the fact that while Percy and Annabeth are in Tartarus, and... Percy says that comment about like, oh, I wonder if we're going to find Luke's shoes down here. Luke is in Elysium in the highest like level of the underworld in like a paradise world in the afterlife with children that he killed just having the best time. That's a golden child.